The bone-piercing cold of the Gaoligong Mountains took its toll on the Chinese expeditionary force. Tangshu 用飞机一远到高丽公山it was overcast and rainy on June the 1st, and it was very cold in the Gaoligong Mountains. Two soldiers brought to regimental headquarters were so cold, they couldn't move. Their hands and face were like ice to the touch. Their eyes were opened very wide, and they blinked constantly. By the time a medic brought some hot soup for them to eat, they couldn't even swallow. They both died with their eyes wide open. Supplying the army with provisions in the mountains was extremely difficult. But the people of western Yunnan helped make it possible for the Chinese expeditionary force to cross the Gaoligong Mountains. Wen 背肉量是有没有过早就是有过早在路上又被晚上住又被有在那趟菜了什么又被晚上住所以原谅人就是吃神大米这个饿了就是发在一斤大米抓着大米在这里就着吃渴了渴了没有水是在那山边那些山沟
also joined the attack on the Japanese. They organized units of volunteers to serve as guides, to transport food and ammunition, and carry the wounded. They didn't flinch from sacrificing their lives, and they were like brothers to us. Through the support of the local people, the Chinese Expeditionary Forces supply problem was solved. The Japanese forces were surrounded, and they didn't come out from their bunkers. Once after capturing a Japanese position, Tel Dargang found a dozen or so corpses in a ditch along the road. Their legs, buttocks and arms were all covered with knife scars. It was at Beijai Gongfang that the Japanese experienced their worst supply problem. They'd been surrounded there for a long time. When the final fortifications were blown up and the Japanese were captured, the Chinese were surprised that there were only 75 Japanese left out of an original force of 300. General Dor discovered a surprising secret that made the local people hate the Japanese even more. When American liaison officers entered a Japanese officer's canteen at Beijai Gungfang, they were astonished to discover human bodies in various stages of preparation for consumption. Many of them had been stripped of their skin, and some had nothing left but their skeletons. Tolongamba the memoirs of Japanese prisoner of war Takakimi Yoshino contain no mention of this, but he does obliquely mention the cannibal troop. That would be the 2nd Brigade of the 148th Regiment. In the postscript to Yoshino's memoir, Yutaka Maruyama who was also one of the few survivors of the Gaoligung Mountains campaign, wrote, Some of what happened on the battlefield can be retold, but some cannot. One is willing to write about some things, but wants to banish others forever from his memory. On the battlefields of the Gaoligo Mountains, the Japanese army had violated the ultimate taboo and eaten the bodies of their fallen comrades. In the first week after crossing the river and engaging the enemy, the Chinese army lost nearly 10,000 men. The price it paid for crossing the Gaoligung Mountains far exceeded the expectations of the commanders of the Chinese Expeditionary Force. It was only 10 days after the battle began, when it was already winding down, that they discovered the Japanese had known the Chinese plan of attack all along. The Chinese 
那个地方在打仗的时候呢，就缴获了一套日军地图。那么这个地图拿到这个十一集团军的司令部呢，呃，宋希濂的话就大拍桌子生气。他看的那个地图上呢，他说是完全跟他在司令部看到那个地图一模一样。那么日军的话呢，就是根据我们的进攻，首先打。高丽贡山这样的部署，那么他们就加强了兵力。那么宋希濂呢，就大骂，就说是一定是出了奸细。宋希濂就打电话跟卫立煌说：“卫总司令，我这里有事。”卫立煌呢就跑到了十一集团军的前线，就看了这个地图。当时为什么会泄密呢？后来呢，我看到日本的那个《公刊战士》上提到这么一段，就是在反攻之前。中国远征军的一架飞机要飞到缅呃这个印度北部和中国驻印军联系的时候，这架飞机出事故掉到了腾冲的境内。那么、呃、有一个高级参谋呢，他带的很多文件来不及烧毁就被日本人抓获了。那么这份文件正好就是中国远征军反攻滇西的整个计划。The idea behind the plan for crossing the Gaoligong Mountains had been to conduct a surprise attack and win a swift and easy victory. However, because the Japanese had got their hands on a copy of the plan, they were the ones who gained the initiative. Gaoligong 山的地势太险，陈冲有很多老人说，他们打 Gaoligong 山到最后有些时候是这样，已经到了七八十度的仰角了，他他得他得后面的人得推着他，或者是他把他拴在树上树杈上这样打枪。如果日军在山上只要一两个人用一挺机关枪，那你几百个人、几千个人，你都上不去。如果我们还是按照原来的部署进攻高丽贡山，那完全就可能就打打不下来，那么整个滇西的反攻就无法打下来。那么那个驻印军五月份已经开始进攻密支那了。那么，如果没有我们云云南这个远征军这样的策动，那么整个中美在中缅印战区准准备打通这条公路的这个计划，就可能要无限制的推呃这个推迟，这个这个这个严重性是很厉害的。If a Chinese army of 200,000 men couldn't defeat a Japanese army of only 30,000, the effect of its failure would quickly spread to northern Burma and India, and impact on the entire Asia-Pacific War. The Japanese could well surge into India and attack Kunming, Guiyang, and Chongqing. The domino effect of the failure of the New Jiang River campaign could have far-reaching repercussions. Wei Li Huang, a veteran of countless battles, hastily summoned Song Xilian, commander of the 11th Group Army of the Chinese Expeditionary Force, and Huo Kuijiang, commander of the 20th Group Army of the Chinese Expeditionary Force, for an emergency planning session. After listening to their suggestions, he immediately ordered the general staff to revise the plan of attack. Within just a few days, the general staff, working entirely in secret, devised a new plan of attack. The 20th Group Army will continue its posture of attacking the Japanese army so they wouldn't guess what was going on. Meanwhile, the three armies of the 11th Group Army would make their way down the east side of the Nujiang River along the base of Mount Sungshan. All army vehicles would travel at night without lights. It works. Only later, when the Japanese monitored radio traffic, that they discovered that radio traffic had increased dramatically on the other side of the river. But by the time they sounded the alarm, it was too late to redeploy troops to meet the attack. So, because China was in the Hongmusu War, they discovered the Japanese forces. They discovered that the Japanese forces had been destroyed in the Hongmusu War. 因为他们调到了高丽贡山，那么这个时候宋希濂就提出，我们将计就计，呃，让这个做降佯攻的这个十一集团军马上提前反开始总攻，反攻不几天，那在高丽贡山的日军就已经慌了阵脚了，这这个时候他们就已已经有点无心恋战了，因为如果是龙陵和松松山一旦攻陷，那那那那日日军他他他。他
他高丽贡生的日军，他他他会被包围的，他没有一个给养的，他要以这个腾冲为依托的，这个对他来说是非常腹背受敌、非常可怕的一件事。At the field headquarters of the American Army, the new battle plan won approval, and the Americans offered to provide more fighter plane support. On June the 1st, 1944, the first group of soldiers from the Chinese Expeditionary Force arrived at Mount Songshan, a fierce battle for this lush forest of cypress and pines was about to begin. Mount Songshan, at the southern foot of the Hangduan Mountains at an altitude of 2,000 meters, overlooks the western bank of the Nujiang River. During World War II, this mountain was a bridgehead on the Yunnan-Burma Road. Since 1942, when the Japanese army occupied the western bank of the Nujiang River, the strategic importance of Mount Songshan had become more conspicuous than ever. Whoever had Mount Songshan had the initiative in both offensive and defensive in the Nujiang River battle zone. Mount Sungshan, Tangchung and Lungling formed a triangle that could reinforce each other in any battle that took place in the area. From the top of Mount Sungshan, you could see the entire battlefront to the east of the Nujiang River without using binoculars. It was also possible to see a 100 kilometers long section of the Yunnan Burma Road as it zigzagged its way through mountains in Baoshan and Lunglin. Aerial survey data showed that the 105 howitzer groups of the Japanese army at Mount Songshan could cover an area of several dozen square kilometers. Considering the Japanese held such an advantageous position, at first, the Chinese Expeditionary Force chose to attack Tangchong instead of Mount Songshan. On the early morning of June the 1st, 1944, amid dense bombardment from 30 US B-25 bombers, the left wing of the Chinese Expeditionary Force launched an offensive. A reinforced division of the 11th Group Army crossed the Nujiang River and began to attack La Meng Village, the first Japanese stronghold on Mount Songshan. Through his binoculars, Commander Zhong Bin of the 71st Corps watched as his vigilant soldiers moved ahead, waiting for the enemy to appear. The latest reconnaissance had revealed that the Japanese army had no more than 400 soldiers and a dozen or so machine guns on Mount Songshan. The 28th Division of the Chinese Expeditionary Force outnumbered the Japanese Army by 20 times. With the aerial fire support of the U.S. Army, taking La Meng Village should not be difficult. On top of this, Song Xilian had ordered two divisions of the 71st Corps to attack Long Ling so that the Japanese troops there could not reinforce their ally at Mount Songshan. This action increased the chances of success. The Chinese soldiers were 500 meters away from the Japanese stronghold. All was silent. Soon, they were 200 meters from the Japanese stronghold. Silence still. The Commander Zhong had a bad premonition, and suddenly columns of smoke and explosions from mines and grenades engulfed the Chinese soldiers. Not 10 or 50, but a hundred machine guns were firing upon them and flames were shooting out from hidden bunkers. The first round attack ended in failure in just 15 minutes. An entire battalion had entered the battle and only one squad had returned. Both the commander and vice commander of the battalion were killed. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, Commander Jung would not have believed that his soldiers had been torn to pieces by fire before they had even seen the enemy.
。所以那天我有个老乡叫张玉平，同我弹一个钢板，他最亲民，我都不民。哎，我说张玉平，你快点，等我去看他光了手，手指头，我看他死了。从此大家不再吃了不得药，就。我也下周了，我就很快挖脚种好，因为挖好脚种好了嘛，想去采个钢板了嘛，多走远啊！那等我下来看，我这帽子，这帽子扎了两个印，这帽子，哎呀，这帽子扎了两个印，还这是什么子呢？这个衣裳也扎，扎了两个印，就把这热烧红，反正就不怎么去挖了哦。哎呦，那不一样，惨了有些。打死了这点，有没有脱下来？特别有个，有个，有个，有个同志，家娃，老乡啊，你再跟我一抢吧，我疼得很呐、啊，就是脚又下雨哈。Yuan De Jun, a former soldier of the Eighth Corps, recalled the battle. We were in an unfavorable geographic position. The enemy commanded a high position. We suffered heavy casualties. Many died on the mountain. The battlefield had heaps of bodies. We couldn't pull them down during the day. We could only watch as they stopped breathing. And during the night, the enemy often launched attacks. Nobody was willing to pull those bodies off the battlefield. When airplanes dropped bombs or cannons fired, we saw bloody smoke soar up and human limbs fly in the air. A Japanese soldier also recalled the battle. I saw two boys in their early teens. They crept up and stood there crying. They neither drew near nor went away. I shouted to them in Chinese, "Come up!" One of them timidly came forward. He was then pushed down the cliff, and he died. It took nearly a month to seize La Mang Village. When it was finally taken, Commander Zhong learned that the reconnaissance report was highly inaccurate. The La Mang garrison was, in fact, made up of elite troops of the Japanese 56th Division. This garrison had no less than 1,200 men. La Mang Garrison was named after the village at Da Yaoko on Mount Sungshan. Mang in the Dai language means an open and flat place. The garrison was a highly mechanized unit equipped with 105 mm heavy artillery, mountain artillery, anti-aircraft machine guns, quick-firing anti-tank guns, and other highly powerful weapons. The garrison was, in fact, a crack unit of the Japanese army. In the annual military competition held by the Japanese Front Army in Burma, the garrison always came first in rifle shooting, gun shooting, and climbing with a heavy backpack. The hard battle on Mount Sungshan lasted nearly a month. On July the first. Waitong Bridge across the Nujiang River was repaired and reopened to traffic. Before long, the Eighth Corps, sent by Commander in Chief Wei Li Huang, arrived as reinforcements. Soon after, a hundred cannons of the expeditionary force were transported across the river. The Japanese army on top of Mount Sungshan knew that danger was approaching. A lieutenant of the Japanese 56th Division recalled the situation. Armored vehicles of the Chinese Army arrived. It seemed that the bridge of the Nujiang River had been repaired. Later, aerial reconnaissance by our companion army confirmed our supposition. It was the monsoon season, and the water rose high in the river. We were amazed that they had repaired the bridge so quickly. The difference in altitude from the ferry to our positions was about 700 meters. We saw their trucks laden with ammunition and logistics for a counteroffensive, snaking along the road. But the terrain 
blocked our fire. We couldn't bomb them. We could only hear the motors booming day and night and watch as the heaps of ammunition grew higher and higher at the front of the Chinese army.